Good morning. Welcome to our second installment of Unnoticed, where I go around my house uh, looking for things that are typically unnoticed, or they go unnoticed, and then I share them with you. So even though I'm filming some of this outside, I took my observations inside, and uh, I eventually stumbled upon something in the corner of my kitchen. Um, it's a tool that's extremely useful, but it's uh, usually unnoticed by everybody but the one person in the house that puts it to use. And that item is right here with me. It's a broom. You may have seen one of these before. It's one of the most common household items, but only the bravest of us actually put it in our hands. So a broom is a simple tool that has a couple of parts. One that you're looking at right here is the broomstick that attaches to the head of the broom that includes the bristles. The broom I just showed you is a modern version of it. The broom's been around for a really long time. Brooms are even mentioned in the Bible in the New Testament, so you got to give them at least 2,000 years, something like that. So they haven't always looked like this. So brooms have always had those basic parts that I showed you, the broomstick and the bristles in the head down at the bottom that helps you sweep things up when you need to do that. But before we had modern manufacturing and textiles, they were made out of branches and twigs. Besoms, which are branches, had other uses too, so uh, early on, brooms were known as besom brooms. Brooms didn't really have any definitive shape until the year 1797. So I'll give you a second to do the math in your head. How long ago was that? So you probably came up with 223 years? Yeah, that's right, it was 223 years ago when a gentleman named Levi Dickinson, who was a Quaker farmer in Massachusetts, decided to streamline the entire thing. So this unruly bumble of twigs at the end of a stick needed to be fixed, in his opinion, to be more efficient. So Levi Dickinson decided that all the bristles need to be in a row like this so that you can cover the most space with a single sweep so you're not working too hard and every time you move the broom it was more efficient. So Levi Dickinson used his crop of broom corn, which we know as sorghum, which was primarily used to feed animals back in the day. And he attached that to the end of the besom, or the stick, and then tied it with twine. And they were equal enough in length that he could line them up. He then developed a system of mass producing these things, so he was able to make a business out of it. And he sold hundreds of brooms every year to the surrounding community. So after that, the idea of the Dickinson broom became very popular and it spread across the expanding United States. And so there were several farmhouses where they manufactured these brooms and they still exist today as modern brooms like the one I showed you. So if you take a closer look at the broom bristles at the bottom, they're actually split, split ends. You don't want this to happen to your hair, but it's actually a fantastic thing that happened to some of the original brooms. Some brooms are manufactured now on purpose to have those split ends because they cover more surface in a single sweep and they also have a tendency to grab onto hair and dust bunnies and other things that some of the original brooms could not get a hold of. But the besom brooms would do the same thing. So after use over and over, the broom bristles would actually break at the end and they would develop that split end. So modern manufacturers decided, why don't we just build that into the design? And so you can buy brooms now that just have those split ends already. So brooms made out of sorghum, you'd have to break them in use after use after use after use eventually you get the nice split end and so you're breaking in that broom uh, kind of the same way you break in like a catcher's mitt or a mitt for baseball um, I would show you one but I don't have one I've never played baseball I've never played softball I don't even have a baseball around here although I did play t-ball when I was really little I, I remember that I think I was four or five years old uh, the coach picked my position for me um, I, I was the pitcher if that, that means, means anything to you, I, I don't know. That's how good I was. So you got a pile of debris, what now? That's what now, the dustpan. And so the dustpan came uh, about a century after the original modern broom design. But it's extremely useful because originally people just had to kind of sweep the debris out their front door. Uh, domiciles are smaller than uh, front door access was easier and they usually had just like a one room house. I'm already outside so I'll just kind of let me see. Just sweep that over there. There you go. That was satisfying. Can I can I repost this on on like ASMR or something like that? Would that work? Probably not. Ugh, gross. Look at all the garbage at the end of those bristles right there. But 
at least now you know that's not going into your uh, into your food later on it's stuck to the broom thanks to the uh, split end design so brooms also show up in mythology and folklore the most common reference is the witch's broom that witches use brooms as a vehicle to fly through the sky so believe it or not there are a ton of reasons there are many different reasons why uh, you would have witches riding on brooms. I'll only mention the one here. So witchcraft is traditionally tied to nature religions. You know, nature religions can sometimes be characterized as being strongly female. And since female means women, women were associated with nature religions more often than men typically were, at least according to Western society. So a number of women who would participate in these nature religions oftentimes wouldn't share the same domestic roles or the same domestic ideas as uh, women in, in Western society or in the Christian community. Some of these women would be viewed as different or other than and, and therefore considered dangerous because the people around them didn't quite understand uh, what their religion was about or what they were doing. So this idea of other would breed in a popular imagination this sinister um, idea of somebody who is casting spells or hexing people um, and, and up to no good because they were using magic I guess and during the Middle Ages one of the common symbols of women's domestic role was the broom they were the keepers and cleaners of the home and so these people that didn't share that tradition they were being viewed as somebody who would take that broom the symbol of, uh, of the domestic of the home and rather use it in their evil ways, flying over the town, uh, casting spells. So here's a common image of a mythological witch, and you can see she's flying on a besom broom. It's a branch that's got twigs, and they're tied together with a string there. And this is what people usually think of when they think of witch. Anyhow, I've got some work to do, as you can see. Oh, apparently I'm going to be sweeping up some socks, too. So thanks for joining me today for our second episode of Unnoticed. Um, I challenge you to do the same thing. Uh, find something that goes typically unnoticed in your home or apartment around your house and uh, post about it. Comment on it on the comments below and tell me one interesting thing about that uh, item that usually goes unnoticed.